Hey guys, what's going on? It is Wednesday, and if it is Wednesday, it is time for Story Time with Taffy, the Respawn Edition. A lot of you out there may not know who I am. I'm McLaffy Taffy, aka Ryan, the other half of the Mr. Wiffles channel, the channel that brings you passive aggression every Monday night right here on Respawn. We have a handful of different programs over at our channel. One of them happens to be Story Time with Taffy. Every week, every Wednesday, I go down to the comments section of the video from the week before and pick a topic on which to speak and tell a story from my life. I'm 32 years old. I'm a little bit older than, than the average gamer in the Respawn crowd, so I feel like I impart a, a little bit of extra insight on my idiocy and the dumb stuff that I've done during the course of my life. There have also been a couple of cool things. The series itself is almost 30 episodes long over on the channel. It's been really well received, so we convinced the people over here at Respawn to let us throw a little chum in the water, as it were, to see if you would enjoy an episode or two once in a blue moon coming up over here. We know that Respawn has long since moved away from the era of Hutch and sea nanners soothing your ears with dulcet tones but let me see if i can't hearken you back to the day as this is being posted wuffles and i should be touching down back in our respective hometowns after a four-day stint of occupying the respawn offices pa and la hopefully filming a little bit with the respawn crew but that will bring us to today's story time topic the first time i went to southern california it's not fair to say la i didn't spend a whole lot of time in la i ended up spending a whole lot of time in bakersfield which is not quite the same thing I I was 18 years old. I traveled down there with my girlfriend. We'll call her Katie. Katie had had kind of a shitty upbringing. She'd had a lot of open heart surgery as a kid. She was living with her mom and stepdad, both of whom had become meth dealers and addicts. I didn't know this when I started to date her. I did know that she was in an abusive relationship, so I took her out of it. And at one point, just to take her away from the state in which we lived, I decided to grab her and whisk her down to SoCal where her biological father lived. I assumed that it couldn't be a whole lot worse than the situation she was in. I thought maybe a little time in the sunshine would do her good. Initially, her dad, of whom I had not heard a lot about, told us a whole bunch of really nice things about how he was going to take us to Catalina Island, he was going to take us to Universal, he was going to show us all the sights and sounds of Southern California, the place where dreams get a tan and go vegan, and then come true. So we were really excited, we got down there and he picked us up and he took us out to his pad in Bakersfield, uh, and it did not take long for all of this to sort of unravel. I was really happy and enjoying myself. And then the first day came and it was time to go to Universal Studios and we could not find him. And we got a phone call and he said, I'm sorry, I'm gonna be running a little bit behind. I'm stuck at work. Uh, I will get home as soon as I can, but we're gonna have to go ahead and rain check this day. Uh, so if you wanna take the keys to the ZX uh, and go ahead and I know she has some friends down here she'd like to visit. Just go ahead and take my daughter out to visit friends and, and shop and, and do dinner and there's some money on the counter and that's on me. So I take her out to see her friend Nicole and we did some swimming and laying out by the pool and caught some sun and then went shopping and did dinner and had a pretty good time. We get home and we find out that being delayed at work actually meant that he had gone out and become incredibly drunk with co-workers and had come back to his pad and had started up a cash money blackjack game where he was the house and the minimum bet was a $20 bill. And I don't know why, but I instantly became antagonistic because I felt like, hey, your daughter flew down here on her dime and I flew down here on my dime to visit with you. So maybe on our first day in town, you would choose not to get drunk and hang out with your friends and play fucking blackjack. So I sat down with a lone $20 bill and I said I'd like to buy a seat and they all giggled and laughed and everything but the nice thing was and I knew this was all related to luck and I was really glad the fates were on my side this day. I laid the $20 bill down and about an hour and a half later I cashed out with about $300 like just everything was hitting for me and he looks at me and he says you can't cash out. You can't take all that money away and I said the hell I can't. I'm gonna take this money and put it in my pocket and leave and I'll just consider this a, a reimbursement for the day that didn't happen. Then he starts to throw a fit and his roommate, Pup, I guess is a nickname for the amount of hound dogging he was supposed to have done, but he was the only like good person I met while I was in Southern California. Pup basically says, well, you know what, Mike, you need to go ahead and leave this kid alone. Let him take his money. He won it fair and square and just feel really comfortable in the fact that if he is ever your son-in-law, you'll be happy to have a son-in-law with such gigantic brass balls. And I decided I was not done twisting the knife and said, don't worry, Mike, I'm going to spend most of it on your daughter anyway. Someone had to. And I left. I walked away and I grabbed my girlfriend and, and we went and sat in the hot tub of this relatively nice house and just kind of commiserated on how shitty the start was to our trip. Lo and behold, the next day was supposed to be Catalina Island 
Island, which sounded amazing, and I would still love to make it back there at some point. I hear nice things about it. And we get a carbon copy phone call from the day before. I'm being held up at work. I'm really sorry. I'm going to try to get back there as soon as I can. We do the exact same thing where we just kind of entertain ourselves. We grab his extra car and just go zooming around town. You can see she's visibly upset, which is kind of, you know, pissing me off because I brought her down here hoping to show her that something in her life is good. And instead, I, I, I basically just showed her that every one of her parents sucked, not just the ones she lived with. So we get back to his house and we see more cars in front. It's all the same cars that we have saw the night before. So we know his buddies are back. We know there's probably drinking involved. So I say, okay, well, let's poke our head inside. Worst case scenario, we'll go hide in the hot tub, jacuzzi area, and that'll be fine. We walk in and one of the first things we see is at the card table where they apparently had started off playing cards again. There is this strange, skanky, middle-aged woman sitting in his lap. And as we're sitting there, she is kind of being passed around like a beer bottle. So her dad not only has skipped out on plans for our second day in a row and come home drunk with his buddies, but now has brought home an old skank for them to fondle while they play cards. Initially, I said, let's just grab the car. We'll get out of here again. I can't believe this. Let's not stick around here. So she goes to get the keys and she opens up his bedroom door and in the bedroom, locked from the outside, is this woman's two kids who look to be like five and seven. So he picked this woman up at a bar. She said, I can't go with you because my sitter's time is going to run out. And he said, that's cool, baby. We'll swing by your pad, get your kids and then lock them in my bedroom so that we can molest you and get drunk as a group as a handful of friends having a blast and at this point i grabbed the zx keys and i dragged my girlfriend out there and we tried to drive off and at this point drunken mike comes bounding down the driveway and throws himself in front of the car and pup who was not involved in all the shenanigans had seen what was going on and like jumped out of his bedroom window and ran down and grabbed this heaping pile of white trash and dragged him out from in front of the hood and just yelled drive ryan drive get her the hell out of here so we did and we drove off and eventually we came back while he was at work and we gathered up our things and we spent the rest of the time down there with her friend Nicole and flew out and it is why hopefully at the time that this has gone up I've gone back to LA in Southern California to hang out at the respawn offices and had a much better time uh, but that was my first impression of Southern California and it did not go well so I am eager to go back and hopefully enjoy myself in the sunshine and the surf I want to thank you guys for giving me about 10 minutes of your time. Please head down to the comment section below. If you enjoyed this, let Respawn know you'd like to see Storytime show up again once in a while. If you didn't enjoy this, now's a good time to keep it to your damn self. Otherwise, give us some comments, ideas, suggestions for future Storytimes. I want to thank you guys for showing up, for giving me a little space in your ear. We will see you next Wednesday over at the Mr. Wuffles channel. I will leave a link to the playlist for our... 30 other storytime episodes that are over on the channel. Hope you'll go check those out. In the meantime, on behalf of the Mr. Wuffles channel, the music is by Oddbox. My name is Taffy, and I am out.